Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be exploring the left navbar construct and kind of how to set it up inside of your Figma file. So I just did a quick search here for dashboard because this is typically where we see these left nav UIs, any sort of like enterprise application or portal. Um, they're not typically used on like marketing websites, although there are some elegant ways to sort of introduce a left navigation construct into a marketing website. But typically we see them on these sort of dashboard designs where we're like analyzing data, right? Where we have this fixed left nav bar and then your main content area in the center, which sort of allows for a little more vertical space because we don't have a top navigation here. Let's find another example. Here's another example with like these really nice icons on the side, right? Where we're kind of reading left to right here where we're selecting something and then we're analyzing data or we're looking at some insights. I've designed a few of these for a few different clients, um, like internal sales tools types of things where they leverage like a left nav. Some have labels, some don't. Um, but basically I'm just going to be showing you guys how to set up this grid basically inside of Figma, which will set you up for success when designing these UIs with left navigation. All right, so we're back in Figma and let's just draw out a frame. So I'm gonna hit F on my keyboard and let's add a desktop size artboard. And I like to go with, let's do 1440 by, let's do a MacBook Pro, 1440 by 900. So we get that nice kind of rectangular ratio. Um, and notice this is 1440 pixels wide and that number is gonna be divisible by four or eight. And that's um, great because I like to use an eight point baseline grid started doing this about a year ago and it just really helped with my vertical and horizontal rhythm and spacing of elements. It just makes it a lot easier to build scalable design systems that allow everyone on your team to kind of be on the same page. It, it really helps developers with spacing and aligning things. Um, I really started doing this mainly because I heard like Google was doing it and the big players like Microsoft and some of these other big um, companies were using an eight point baseline grid. Um, rather than explaining exactly all the benefits of an eight point grid, I'm gonna just link you a really great resource on the matter. Um, but basically what an eight point grid means or how to set it up anyway is to click your frame and come over here to layout grid hit the plus icon and by default mine's already at eight point or eight pixels so that means each of these little squares here um, that is made from these intersecting grid lines is eight pixels by eight pixels so by default if you haven't done this already i think yours will probably be at 10 um, but to fix that you just click this and you change the size from 10 to 8 which I've already done. And of course you can mess with the visibility of your grid line. I, I, I don't mind their default um, at 10 pixels or at 10%. So that's how you would set it up. And one other thing, if you do set up an eight point grid, I would really recommend changing your nudge value. So sort of what that means is say I draw out a square here, right? And it's you know snapping to these grid lines very nicely. It's 40 by 40, which is divisible by eight. When I nudge to the left and right and up and down, notice how this square is staying on grid. It's snapping to those grid lines because it's moving in increments of eight because I've set my nudge value to eight instead of 10. So to do that, just come over here to the menu and I would just search for nudge. It should pop up and just change your big nudge to eight. So by default, yours will be 10. Change it to eight to allow you to nudge in increments of eight. Cool, so that's how you set up your eight point grid. Now let's actually add the left nav construct here. So all I'm gonna do is just draw out a rectangle and it's gonna be flush with the left side of our screen, right? It's gonna be fixed to the left side of the viewport. That's how we typically see these left nav constructs, even Figma, right? Like this whole left panel, right? It's fixed to the left side of the, of the viewport. So you can think of this in a similar fashion. Now in terms of the actual size of this left nav, we want it to obviously snap to our eight point grid, but how wide do we want it? Well, I typically like mine a little bit wider um, just to allow for a little more padding and breathing room for like any icons that would go on your left nav. So if we look at an example, um, here's YouTube, right? They leverage this left nav construct and YouTube um, is obviously part of the material design system. So we know they're on an eight point grid system. If we inspect this left nav by right clicking and hitting inspect, we can actually see how, how wide it is. So theirs is actually 72 pixels wide. Um, but as you see, like YouTube also has text strings for labels and it gets a little bit tight in here, right? When you have these longer text strings and they probably do this for accessibility purposes. 
But when you get into things like translations for different languages, the 72 pixels might not be ample space or ample width for these longer text strings. Um, and for the left nav, I'm gonna be building, I'm not even gonna include the labels. Um, it's gonna be sort of a learned behavior, right? You, you're gonna click on the icon and then you're gonna quickly figure out what each of these icons mean. Um, I think it's just gonna look a little cleaner. Yes, for accessibility, it's probably not as great, but um, for tutorial's sake, we're not gonna have the labels. But anyway, there's a 72 pixels wide. Um, I'm gonna add a little more width. So let's make ours like 96 for the sake of this tutorial. And one cool thing about using this eight point grid system, especially when you're not designing all custom icons yourself, which I rarely ever do. Um, usually if I'm designing for a client, they already either have an icon set or we're kind of just using material icons or we're using maybe like feather icons. So let's use feather icons for this. So I actually have this feather icon plugin. They're really kind of modern looking icons. I really like the look of them. They have this great plugin that allows you to, you know, search for whatever you need and quickly insert them into your project. So let's just insert an icon here and notice by default, these icons all sit on a 24 by 24 pixel canvas, which, you know, is pretty much designed for an eight point grid. Everything's going to align directly on that grid setup. So if I were to come over here and paste this onto my left nav and kind of center align it as an icon would, when I zoom in here, one thing to notice, we're actually not directly on our eight point grid if this is center aligned. So notice there's 36 pixels of left and right padding here. But one thing about using an eight point grid, it's sort of implied that anything that aligns to an eight point grid will also sort of align to a four point baseline grid. So when you need a little bit of extra detail, you can check to make sure you're on grid by um, just changing your grid really quickly to four instead of eight. So now when I zoom in, notice we are snapping to these grid lines. So if you ever need like a little more detail and you just want to make sure everything's sort of perfectly on grid, you know, you can toggle back and forth between a uh, four and an eight point grid. So I'm just going to change this back to, to eight for now. Cool. So now let's actually set up our grid or our columns rather for the actual content of this application that we're building here. So to do that, I'm also going to add another uh, layout grid. But instead of grids this time, we're gonna change this to columns. And by default, uh, Figma puts down five columns. I'm gonna change this to 12 for desktop. It's usually what I use for desktop. It's pretty standard. Now, instead of stretch, instead of having this grid stretch from left to right, so from one side of the artboard to the other side of the artboard, we're actually gonna offset this grid a little bit because we have this fixed left nav bar. So our content really can't be on top of this left nav area. It has to start, you know, inward a bit, so somewhere around here. So we actually wanna change this from stretch to left because when we do that, we get this offset option. So I'm just gonna nudge this offset over a bit. So basically our offset is gonna be the width of this left nav plus whatever margin we want between the left nav and the first column. So for this, I'm gonna kind of just draw out a spacer and check. So maybe we want a little more, maybe like 56 pixels of left and right margin for our grid. So I'm actually just gonna bump this offset up a little bit more until our first column sits right here. So we have 56 pixels of left and we're gonna have ideally 56 pixels of right. I don't know if it's gonna align perfectly, but we'll see. So now we wanna for 12 column desktop grids, I usually like 24 pixels of gutter. That's sort of what material design recommends and that's usually what I do. And now I'm just gonna kind of bump up the width until we have about equal left and right margin. So I'm just gonna duplicate the spacer and see if we could get perfect left and right margin, which I don't think we're gonna be able to do, but let me just show you. If I just bump the width up a little, you see how when I do this though, we're no longer on grid. Like these columns aren't sitting on our grid lines anymore. So I'm just gonna actually move this down to 80. So if 80 pixel wide columns, we have 24 pixel gutters and an offset of 152. And all of these numbers are divisible by four or eight. Um, the only thing is we're gonna have a little more margin on the right side. So instead of 
instead of 56 pixels of margin, we're gonna have 64, which is totally fine. Um, you know, your users aren't really gonna notice that. We could probably get these exact if we maybe mess with the width of our left nav, but we're gonna keep it at 96. So now we have a perfect, almost perfect grid to work off of. So I know it doesn't even look like we did anything. <laughs> we pretty much just set up a grid in this video. Um, I just wanted to show you kind of the thought that goes into designing these left nav UIs and how you should sort of set everything up in advance. It's gonna make our life a lot easier when we actually go to start designing and creating components um, within this grid system we've created. So make sure you subscribe for part two where we're actually gonna start getting into the design of this UI. It's gonna be a lot of fun and I hope to see you there.